I know the Bible said the word to say, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. We're to continually look for his appearing. But folks, many in the church have become absolute escapists. They, they want Jesus to come right now, only to lift them out of the, the horror and the, the shame around them and all the trials that they're going through. They just want to be delivered so they can just kind of go to heaven and lay their pillow head on a pillow and, and relax and get rid of the stress in their life and, and have, a, have, a, have a nice, easy eternity and forget a city of wicked and vile people, forget the people around them they are going to go to hell. Not so for Elijah. Elijah knows his master's work is done. He, know he's got, he knew he's got to have to stay and the responsibility is going to be upon him. And he said, now look, Elijah, you know what I'm going to face. You know the problems. You've just shown me the world. You've shown me the condition of society. You've shown me the condition of the church. Now, you know I'm going to need more than anyone has ever needed. I'm asking for a double portion of the Spirit of God on you. Elijah says, if, if you can see me when I depart, it shall be done unto thee, but if not, it shall not be. You've asked a hard thing, he said. Hard for who? Is it too hard for God? No. Nope. It is too hard for Elijah because he can't give of his spirit. But no, he's, it's, it's hard because of the cost to Elisha himself. The hardness has to do with the young man he's talking to and he's training and is his last lesson. He said, you know, you read this. Uh, nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be done unto thee, but if not, it shall not be done. Well, what is this? In other words, if you see me before I go, you're going to get your blessing. If not, he's going to leave disappointed and all this is going to be in vain? No way. The, in the original, there are two words that are not. In fact, they're in italics in your King James. <clears throat> and that is when and am. When I am taken. That is not in the original. In fact, uh, <clears throat> that's been corrected in the revised edition. In context of the whole teaching of this chapter, there's only one conclusion. When you see me as being gone, it's something that has to happen in you, Elisha. When I go, you can't build me a memorial. You can't be preaching about what I did. You have to see me as God. When you see me in your mind and your heart that the past is dead and gone. He wasn't wanting, Elijah was a humble man. He didn't want him going around building schools in his name. He didn't want them to be talking about what God did through him or who he's raised from the dead. Elijah, God wants you to raise the dead. He wants you to do more than I ever did. But you've got to see me as God. And when I go and it dawns on you, you stand alone. He's gone. Here I am, Lord. This is all you've got to work with. And you lay hold of that by faith. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the, he, suddenly, Elijah's gone and there's his mantle. He tears his own clothes in two. And he picks up the mantle, puts it on his shoulders. He goes to the Jordan and he says, where's the God of Elijah? He smites it, and the Spirit of Almighty God was on that man. The waters opened. He had received that double portion. The prophets at Jericho had seen it, and they bowed for him. They, they said the Spirit of, uh, that was on Elijah is on, not the Spirit of Elijah, but the Spirit that was on Elijah is now on Elisha. And what does he do? He retraces his steps. He's ready now to face a dead, dry church. He's ready now to face a society that's gone mad because he's had a touch from God. He has the Holy Ghost revealed to him. He knows his ways now. The Holy Ghost, he, he had gone further than any other man had gone with the prophet. He went deeper. He paid a price. Now, I know this salvation is free, but folks, 
If you're going to know the ways of the Spirit and the true intimacy of Jesus Christ and know the ways of the Holy Ghost, you're going to spend time. You're going to go deeper into the closet, further into the Word. You're going to walk closer than any other man or woman has ever walked through the power of the Holy Ghost. There'll be a hunger to cry in you, I can't stop. I will not let God go until he teaches me his ways and gives me the spiritual authority I need to go out and witness for Jesus Christ and change lives. He comes to Jericho and the 50 prophets meet him and they said, now you know this is called a pleasant place, but look around, there's death everywhere you go. Now, I, I told you to go to 2 Kings and I hope you have your Bible open there and I want you to go to verse, uh, 2 Kings 2 chapter verse 18. He's on his way back now. He's retracing the steps. Verse 18. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho. Now, remember Elijah had asked him to tarry there, and he said no. He knew he wasn't ready. He wasn't prepared. Now he's, he's tarrying at, at Jericho. He said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elijah, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant. That's the name of the city, really. As my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth from the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, thus saith the Lord, I've healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. Look, look at me, please. 50 men of God, 50 students of theology, 50 students who could talk about ascension, could give you all the details and miracles of men of God of the past. But they're totally helpless, totally powerless to stop the poison that's creating the deadness and the barrenness, representing the church. This, they said there's a problem here. There, there's a poisoned well, and it's bringing polluted waters, and it's killing everything. Killing everything. Now, you see, until this man had been alone with God and crying out for that double portion of the Holy Spirit and getting to know him and yielding himself fully to the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit and not to flesh of the men, the flesh, not at all. Now he has the Holy Spirit upon him and working in him and through him. He has his own touch of God, he has his own vision, his own anointing. And now he knows, here comes a man with the answer. And what is the answer to the pollution? What's the answer to deadness, dryness in the church of Jesus Christ? Where did the pollution came, come from? It came from the wellhead, from the pulpit. Men of God who have never dealt with their sins and full of iniquity, and there's poison, there's a disease in the heart. It can be pornography and the internet, it can be almost anything. Now, I'm not indicting the home ministry. I'm indicting those ministers who have killed their churches, literally caused death because they can't preach against sin. They have polluted everything that comes out of their mouth because the stream is polluted. They that bear the ark, must be holy and clean and pure, the Bible says. Those that handle the things of God. And out of this, you, you show me a church where a pastor is in the pulpit who doesn't believe in the inerrancy of the scripture. He doesn't believe in the virgin birth. He doesn't believe there's a heaven, there's a hell. He doesn't preach against sin. He doesn't expose the sin in his own life. He's comfortable with what he's doing. He's not going to deal with sin in the congregation. And I can show you a dead church and a man who's sending people to hell on the left and on the right. And what's the answer? What's the answer? He, he, he didn't go to the stream and try to rebuke it. He said, the answer, a new vessel a clean vessel full of salt we'd call it a salt shaker but he said this i want a new one that's the new heart sanctified by the holy ghost salt 
By the way, folks, what is the water? The water is the Word of God. It was polluted. It, the, the, the deadness in the church is called, caused by a polluted gospel that's going forth. He, he said, get me a new vessel and pour salt in it. And he goes to the spring, not to the river. He goes to the spring where it started, the wellhead, and he pours the salt into the river, and it's cleansed from that day on. Folks, that salt is the gospel of purity. It's the gospel of righteousness of Jesus Christ preached through clean, holy vessels. You show me a man or woman that's shut in with God, hates and despises anything in their life unlike Christ, and goes beyond what others are willing to go, shut in with the Lord, saying, oh, God, fill me and anoint me with the Holy Ghost that when I speak, I speak your mind. I don't speak the flesh. I speak your mind and your heart. You, Lord, put the salt in me. You let me live that life. Let me have that savor in me of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, that's a rebuke to the whole world. And that's something that no dead church can stand up against. And that's the only cure 